Hey, Seth David here with the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time I want to show you Zenkit to do list. Um, it's what I'm describing here as simple yet effective task management. Um, there are lots of project and task management apps out there. I've used many of them. People ask me all the time, you know, Seth, don't you get sick and tired of all these different apps? And the truth is, I don't, because the way I look at these things is. They're tools that I get to put in my virtual toolbox. And then when the tool that I, you know, when the job that I have in front of me um, calls for it, I can pick the right tool for the right job, right? There's lots of task management apps. I, I use ClickUp. I use Smartsheet. It's always the right tool for the right job. And I talk to a lot of people who, unlike me, want something very simple, very straightforward, easy to use, easy to manage. And for that, I can definitely recommend Zenkit to do. Many of you may recall the product called Wonderlist. This was designed to look and feel and work exactly like that product because as you may also know, years ago Microsoft bought Wonderlist and then a year or so ago, a little bit more, they sort of they finally cannibalized it and just kind of ate the code and used it in their Microsoft to do app which most most people I've talked to have agreed with what I felt when I looked at it, which is that it's terrible. So these guys came out with Zen Kit to do right around that time. I saw it then. We've done it. We looked at it in a couple of our 97 and up calls, and we looked at it in a couple of our Friday Zoom calls. But now I just wanted to do just a straight up video for you, a short one, just giving you kind of an introduction to Zen Kit to do. So let's take a look at my screen, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so. The first thing is, you know, and assuming we're looking at setting this up for a business, let's create a new list. So I'm right in here. This is when you set up your account. You'll it'll look pretty much like this, right? These are some of the default things. There's inbox today shows any tasks with a due date of today. Uh, week shows any tasks that are coming due in the next week. And then you can see all which will group it based on the different lists. I've already created a list called content and one called personal. Let's create a new list here and we'll just call it Client X. Okay, over here, as you can see, I can add members. So very easy to collaborate, you know, very easy to just add people into your account. Of course, you'll want to check out the pricing and see what it's going to cost based on the number of collaborators that you need. But uh, and it's been a while since I looked at the pricing on this, but as I recall, it was very reasonable. So now that I have Client X created, I can start adding tasks, right? Do this. Do that, and I like how if I've just got a bunch of things, you see how easy that was. I just typed the title and hit enter, and it's ready for me to enter the next task. That's kind of important to me because I, you know, there will be times where, and I'm assuming many of you have, you know, this or similar experience, um, where I have all these thoughts in my head, and I just need to purge them in terms of different things I need to do that may be for a client, or if they're just all over the map in terms of, you know, what purpose they serve, I can add them right here in the inbox. And then, so if I'm thinking about it, I can say client X, you know, bank racks or something, or sales taxes, whatever that might be. And then later on, I can click and drag it over to client X. Very, very easy to move things around in this product. It's an important criteria to me. Now, let's say that, you know, because this list can start to get long as I add more clients to it. So what I might want to do is add this client list to a folder that I call clients, just for all clients, right? So I'm going to right click this and we're going to choose this option right here that says move to new folder and we'll create that folder and it's called clients. So that's the difference between a folder and a list. A folder can contain many lists, right? I'll click create and see what it does. It creates the folder here. Now from here it's very easy to add. I can create new lists, right? Um, and over here in this ellipsis menu you'll see you have some other options. You can write a description. You can, you know, rename it. You can uh, set the access at the folder level in terms of, you know, you might want to have colleagues in here, you know, or, or if I'm, you know, doing this for my bookkeeping clients, I might want to have my bookkeepers in here, right? And this will show you any archived lists that had lived here in the client's folder now, right? So always poke around, check and see what your options are. If you see a little symbol like this, it usually means something. I can also click to zip this up <clears throat> to hide that whole client list. So if I want to focus on other things, you know, you can see I've got a personal list here where I've started to play around and just use it to list some personal to do's that I have. Right. And you can customize all these. So over here, if I right click on this list, I can go to settings 
Okay, and here is where I can uh, change the icon, actually right over here. So list icon, I can change the icon color, and I can choose from a large list of icons for, you know, each list. So this way, it gives you a nice visual. It might stand out. So I might use different icons for the different types of clients, that kind of thing, All right? So um, now let's go inside of a task. So let's go into the client X list. And I want to show you a couple of things inside of a task, what you can track, what you can do with it, okay? So we'll go to Client X, Bank Recs. Now notice this popped up in the middle of my screen, which is nice. It doesn't do that by default, so I want to show you what that looks like. I'm going to click this ellipsis here, and what you show is side panel. That's the default. So the default is that it pops in on the side here. Now a lot, a lot of you may like this because it's kind of neat and tucked away, and then I can just click on the next task and focus on it. I personally feel a little claustrophobic with that narrow column, and you can resize this, by the way. I can click and drag and make it a little or a lot bigger. But you can also click the ellipsis here and choose Show as a pop-up, okay? Um, the other thing you'll want to know is that in each task, you can create subtasks, right? So I can add subtasks all day long here. Um, also, in terms of the due date, um, not there. There is a recurrence, so let me set a due date. You may need a due date here first before it will let you. There it is, and then you do the repeater. So you have to assign a due date first, and then you can have the repeater, which is a recurring task. You can also establish reminders. So you know, even though the due date's the 31st, I might want to get a reminder earlier than that, okay? And then the repeater has some nice little recurring options. So you can obviously set the quantity, you know, how, you know, how often it's going to repeat, you know, once every week day, month, year, whatever you need, you've got the features here to get your recurring tasks doing. And I know how many of you love the recurring tasks. Some of you just, every time you look at a new project management feature uh, or product, I should say, that's the first question is, does it do recurring tasks? So the answer here is absolutely yes. So one other quick use case before I let you go. Um, let's say that you get a call and you want just a super quick way to start taking notes for that call. Let's create the workflow for that. So we're going to create a new list and call it calls. Okay. So just quickly type that, enter. You can reorder these. So let's say I want this like right at the top, right? So I go to calls, add task. Joe Smith called, right? And then I go in here and I'm going to use the notes feature. Okay. Click on that. You can change this to HTML, by the way, so you get a little more formatting. And now I'm going to take notes. Clients, books are a mess, needs them cleaned up. And of course, you can transfer this information wherever you want later on. The other thing you can do is say, all right, I talked to him and he said he needs to think about it. I'm going to follow up with him on Monday, right? Save. And I can, and I can do it as a reminder. Again, I can do whatever I want. Over here, I can attach files. Okay, here I can add comments. And if I click on the activities, it just shows me kind of the history, the activity log of what happened when I created it, I added the note, and so on and so forth. So you have access to lots of robust features that you want in any task or project management app here. Um, and they're sort of neatly tucked away. So they're not in the way, they're not overwhelming. You use what you need and leave aside what you don't. Now, this this is cool, right? Of course, many of you probably already have a CRM, so use that. But if you don't have a CRM, and again, you're, 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 you're new in business and you just want some simple tools that you can use to track this kind of stuff, well, you can now you can what you can do is you can use this calls folder to, uh, to create like a little CRM-like workflow. I'll show you what I mean. So let's move this to a new folder. We'll call it prospects. Okay. And then... I have calls here, okay, but let's rename this, okay, and then, uh, where's the name, there, <laughs> we'll call this hot, done, let's create a new list called cold, okay, and another one called closed dash one, And we'll do closed dash lost. 
Okay, and that's, I think, enough. You get the idea. So notice I have one task in hot. So if Joe, if I call back Joe on Monday and he says, yeah, I'd like to get started and we get things going, then I just drag him over to closed in one, right? And once he's in here, you know, I might want to leave somebody, you know, that's new like this in here for a while because it's a good chance I'll want to refer back to the notes I made, especially as I'm getting them set up as a client. I want to remember the notes I took that might explain to me, you know, what some of his concerns were and what some, based on that, what some of my goals are going to be in terms of, you know, achieving the results that I want to achieve for the client. So, um, so I can leave them there. And then, of course, when, I'm, when I feel like I'm done, I don't need it anymore. I can mark it done. And as you can see here, I can see all the done tasks. And then if I click on this again, I can choose to hide the done tasks, right? And if I, if I want that back, then what I probably need to do is right click here and go to settings. And there's probably something in here about showing or hiding done tasks, to be very honest with you. I hadn't, hadn't gotten that far with it yet. Um, the other way we can probably do it is complete a task. And then it shows done, and then I can show it. So it looks like maybe that only shows when there's a task in here. So um, that's how you get that to show or hide. All right. So that's the idea. Now you you know so you new call comes in, you start them off in hot, and then you move them through. If they're cold, you know that just means that you're gonna maybe wait a little longer before you follow up with them again, or maybe the fact that you put them in cold means you want to get to them right now before you do lose them permanently, right? So I mean everybody has a different idea of how they look at that. So usually when I first move somebody into cold, it's because I've just talked to them and maybe I've talked to them already once or twice, and they're kind of giving me the runaround, so I stick them in there and. And then maybe I'll wait like a week or a month and then I'll call them one last time and see or reach out to them one last time and see. So that, my friends, should give you some ideas of how you can use ZenKit to do for simple yet effective task management. As always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, post them below wherever you happen to be watching this. If you are watching this on YouTube, um, you'll find a link in the description that you can click on to access the same content on my website where I often put in write-ups and uh, templates you can download. It's a free course so you do need to enter your email to access it but it won't cost you a dime and you don't have to subscribe to get my emails if you don't want to um i hope you will because i think you'll find those useful and valuable but uh but that's the deal so if you want to get access to the templates and downloads and things that i often offer with respect to the content that i'm producing uh you'll want to be able to access this stuff directly in my website. As always, I hope you enjoyed this, learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.